Hey everyone, Daniel here from Cast 98 and in this video I'm going to take you through hopefully in about 10 minutes an entire demo of all of our director tools. So without further ado, let's get started. Here I am on the homepage of Cast 98. This is actually the US site for Cast 98. If I scroll down, you can see very quickly how things work. It starts with a mobile friendly audition form which feeds into the audition dashboard, the audition -y dashboard. And then once casting decisions are made, the director and stage managers can use the rehearsal schedule maker to build a really user-friendly rehearsal schedule that cast members and crew can access. So let's walk through those features. I'm going to go backstage, and as you see, I have a fake show here called Avengers the Musical, and I'm going to click on it down here under Shows You Manage so that I go straight to the backstage um, director area. And so right off the bat, you can see a snapshot of the stats from the show. Um, and if you look at the left side, here's a list of all the director tools that we have. So I'm very quickly going to go through these. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. Under Show Details, you can change the name of your show if you maybe had TBD there to begin with. And then you can leave some information about this production. Uh, you can select a performance view, change your opening night or time, add and remove additional performance dates. You can even drop in a URL where folks can go and purchase tickets. And if for some reason your show is canceled, you can always delete your show here as well. Under co-directors, this is where you're going to select who has the ability to come in and see these director tools and, and use these director tools. And so uh, very quickly and easily, you can add and remove more co-directors to help ease the burden. Announcement templates are where we provide some basic uh, emails for milestones in your show. These are just templates. You can copy and paste these templates into the email client of your choice and send it to all of your auditionees um, and or cast members. When this is a real show and not a fake one, you will see all of the email addresses here that you can copy and paste um, to make those announcements. Under audition details, just like the show details, this is where you can come and leave information about your auditions, what people need to know before they come. You can publish the audition form, select the venue, and then define your audition blocks. These are the time slots that your actors will, um, or your auditionees will be able to choose from when they come to audition for your show. Audition form settings is a beta feature, so it's not quite, it's not totally in use yet. A lot of these are checked by default, um, but this is where you can, if you are a studio member, you can add and remove different sections from the audition form. So you can, you have some basic configuration options. Also in beta is the custom audition questions. And so if you are a studio member, you have the ability to add up to five custom questions on the audition form, okay? Um, so next is Audition eDashboard. As people submit your audition form, it's going to populate your dashboard where you see a list of everyone that submitted an audition form. Just click on one, uh, click on the, the plus sign, the magnifying glass to open up the audition form. This is a fake actor if you can't tell that. So don't, I'm not sharing anybody's information here. Um, you see all of their information on the left side from their actor profile and then their conflicts down below. Now, if you ever see that their submitted conflicts are different than the conflicts on their profile and you want to rectify that, you can use the button down below, save and sync conflicts, and their profile conflicts will become their submitted conflicts. So that's how you as the director or the stage manager, you can... Uh, approve or reject any late conflicts because the schedule maker, when we take a look at it, it only looks at their submitted conflicts, not the conflicts live from their actor profile. On the right side is a report card where you can grade your performers on key performance areas. You can leave a notes, private notes that they, only they see um, and save that report card. And that's going to color code your dashboard so that you can see at a glance who you liked and who you didn't. So when you're making those casting decisions, they are a lot easier. And don't miss the filters at the top so you can um, see who's coming to specific time slots. Uh, you see no one has signed up for March 24th at 12.05 p.m. So really, really handy there as well. So I'm going to go back now to my director tools, and I'm going to go into the cast list. This is where you can 
uh, start making your cast decisions. Also, this is a good idea to come and uh, start building your cast list even before you uh, hold auditions because if your cast list is not published, this is going to show up as a list of available roles that people can audition for. So once the cast list is published, you can come in and assign an auditionee to any role. You see this is a list of all the people that have submitted an audition form. They have to submit an audition form to be listed here. Um, that is how actors opt in to the director and stage manager's accessing their personal information. So it's very important that you enforce that. If you come to Cast 98, you've already cast your show, you will need to have your cast members come in and submit the audition form so that you have their, you automatically collect their conflict information. And again, that's how they opt in to you being, to access, being able to access their information. You can assign each role to a specific group, which is going to be really handy during the rehearsal scheduling process, but the actors themselves will never see what groups that they are put in. The backstage crew is very similar. It's where you can add and remove your crew members and give them a role as well. There's a little bit of a formatting situation here. I will take care of that, but you can leave the role here and make sure that um, everyone is assigned correctly. Okay. Uh, the welcome message. This is where you can add a little bit of messaging for um, the cast who comes to look at the cast list when you publish it. Um, if they are on the cast list, they will see this information. If they are not on the cast list, you can leave a nice little thank you message uh, and encourage them to get involved in other ways. So under cast and crew info, this is um, contact information for uh, everyone in the show in a nice little table format. Uh, only the cast and crew have access to see that information. Cast bios, same thing. This is only available to cast and crew, but they can come in and see the headshots and the cast bio for everyone else in the cast. T-shirt sizes is available to uh, directors and stage managers only. Costuming measurements, again, only available to directors and uh Stage managers only reputation notes are private notes that can be left for actors that will act as kind of a permanent record. Um, future directors, when a performer comes and auditions for a show, f future directors will be able to see these notes. So if someone has a really severe allergy or if they were extremely helpful in the cast or maybe they were habitually late or maybe they dropped out just a couple of weeks before the show. You can leave a note that they are maybe extra helpful or unreliable or um, have, uh, you know, just personality traits that the next director might need to know about. You can leave a note here about each of your actors. So once you move into rehearsals, uh, you can leave some rehearsal information as well as define the default venue. It's going to be really helpful when we get into scheduling the rehearsals uh, that you have the default venue defined so that you're not having to attach the venue to every rehearsal that you add to the to the schedule. Rehearsal groups, this is where you can define what you saw earlier on the cast list. You can add um, just some, some groups that are going to be really, really handy um, so that if you have a large group of like 12 or 20 people in an ensemble or a ballroom dance group, a group of dancers, maybe your leads, you can uh, put them all in a group so that when you're working on the schedule, you only have to click on the group to select all those people instead of having to select them uh, each individually. I'm going to skip the rehearsal schedule for now because I want to show you the builder before I show you the schedule. Um, so here is the audition maker. Um, and so you can select in this uh, tab here, which you can toggle on and off. You can select which people you want to show up. So if you think about the attendees that you're currently putting on the schedule, if it's tech week or if it's um, a run, a show run, you probably want to just select everyone and have them all come. Otherwise, you can select individually who needs to come to this audition. You can use the matrix here to find a nice date. And what you see here are little chat bubbles if they've left a note on their conflict calendar um, about recurring conflicts or maybe upcoming um, different things, just make sure you pay attention to that. If you see an X, it means they've marked off that entire day as a conflict. If you see an explanation point, it means that maybe that entire day is not marked off. It might just be that they have left a note there saying it's a partial conflict. So once you've uh, found a good date, you can just click on it to add a rehearsal to the schedule. And I'm not going to do that here because we already have a bunch of 
rehearsals on the schedule. Um, if you want to toggle the edit editing form here, you can use the third icon over here in the sidebar. You can also toggle that attendee tab on and off. If you use the second icon, it's going to clear anything that you have open so that you go straight back to the matrix. And then the fourth icon is the current rehearsal schedule. So if you add a new rehearsal here, you're going to see it on the schedule, but you'll see it all the way at the bottom. But meanwhile, you can also see which rehearsals you have on the schedule already with just the click of a button. But also, that's what these blue tick marks indicate. The red tick marks indicate how many um, conflicts are on this day. The blue tick marks indicate how many rehearsals you've already put on the schedule for that day. So... Um, this is a snapshot of the rehearsal schedule, but let me show you what that looks like uh, to your cast members as well. So see, if I had any rehearsal information, it would show up here every time someone looks at the rehearsal schedule. And so if you've made any updates to the schedule recently, you can make a note up there. <clears throat> uh, the rehearsal schedule, you can toggle um, any actor can come in when they log in, they see this filter called Just Mine so that they can see at a glance, all of their rehearsals without any of the extra. Also, we highlighted in yellow when it is me as a logged in user, um, that is a rehearsal that I am expected to come to. So if I click on any of these, you see my name is highlighted. Um, and since I am on the US region and the database is shared among all regions, that's why you're seeing some crazy numbers here is because these actors are uh, from other countries and they've submitted. So they don't have a profile on the US region and that's why their name is not showing up here little quirk that you will not experience on the on the backside. So um, as an actor who is on the rehearsal schedule, I can export any rehearsal uh, very quickly and easily with the click of a button to my favorite calendar, um, making it really easy to uh, export to Google Calendar and such. We have a couple of beta features that I also want to tell you about. The daily rehearsal notes is a really, really cool uh, tool that can be used uh, to leave any notes that you might share uh, late at night or late at night. It's usually late at night when we get done with rehearsals, right? Especially during tech week. And so it's very, very handy um, to do that. And if you uh, use the at mention, kind of like a Twitter or an Instagram handle, <clears throat> if you at mention anybody's role or name or initials, then it will highlight that for them and bold it so that they can very easily come and see uh, the, re the rehearsal notes that are meant for them. Uh, so that's going to be an actor favorite feature. And then attendance tracking, we have yet to really um, build out, but it is coming soon. I'm not even going to click on it. So that is pretty much uh, Cast 98 at a glance. I hope you find it useful. Uh, we boast that it is the world's only all digital audition form that automatically syncs conflicts with the easy to use rehearsal schedule maker. It is built for local and community theaters, but it is used by middle schools, high schools, universities, regional theaters, and professional theaters of all sizes in six different countries across the world. So we hope you will give us a try.